Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Got your questions here from Spring.me slash Aaron Rift. Let's get started with the first one from Gravy Sticks. Does Vince stating he's not out of touch highlight the fact of how out of touch he really is? They say that one of the five stages of grief is denial. A lot of people would say that Vince McMahon is out of touch, and Vince is certainly not going to publicly admit that he is out of touch. I think it might be a combination of him being out of touch. He is old. Vince McMahon is no spring chicken. And I also think that Vince McMahon is set in his old ways. Vince McMahon prefers to rely on what has worked for him for the better part of three decades now, three, four decades, over 30 years. Vince McMahon has this mindset that the company can be built around your superhero. Back in the 80s, he had Hulk Hogan. Today, he has John Cena, and everybody else is secondary. I think that WWE is in a position right now, and they might not be for long, but right now and in the past, they've been in a position where they do not have to take chances. And Vince likes to claim that he listens to the fans, but this is also the same guy that has said in the past that the fans sometimes don't know what they want and we have to give them what they think they want. Vince McMahon, I'm sure, from his perspective, is doing what he thinks is best for business. But I think that in the long run, if business continues to decline, if the network continues to struggle, at some point, Vince is going to have to start listening to the fans again. And of course, he will go in a public forum and say that he does listen to the fans. But in my opinion, that's just PR. That's Vince McMahon going out there and saying that. I don't know how much of that he really means. I think that his attitude is he'll do what he thinks is best for business and the people will like it um, one way or another, they'll watch. But eventually, if things keep getting worse and business keeps going down, he'll have to make changes. And you look back at the Attitude Era in the Monday Night War period, WWE was forced to make changes. They were, I think, fighting it. I think that WWE was in denial that they needed to make changes. They kept pushing guys like Doink the Clown. They kept doing silly, cartoonish gimmicks, while at the same time, ECW was revolutionizing the business, and fans were making it clear they wanted to see an edgier wrestling product. They were tired of having their intelligence insulted, as Vince said in that famous promo. And Vince finally made the changes because he had to in order to compete with WCW. Right now, WWE is not in that situation. Vince claims that every television show is competition, so whatever. He's just going to do what he wants to do, and as long as WWE stays profitable, you know, in Vince's mind, having a huge team of writers is an evolution, and WWE is evolving as a business, but the rest of us see it a different way. The rest of us feel WWE would be better off with fewer writers and the wrestlers having more creative freedom and everything not being as scripted. But the realistic situation here is until things really get bad, I don't see things changing. So is Vince out of touch? I would say yes, but he's a guy that I don't feel has gone completely senile yet. When I listened to him on the podcast with Steve Austin, he clearly knew what he was saying and he has his vision and he is stubborn. Vince McMahon will stick to what he thinks works until he feels he has to make a change. That's just my opinion on Vince McMahon, the promoter, and the guy that runs WWE. All right, this next question comes from CPW1978. Hey, Aaron, what do you think about the somewhat surprising role that Eric Rowan has taken on? If handled right, does he have the potential to take the spot forged by other monsters like Kane and The Big Show have filled for years. I have mixed feelings about Eric Rowan right now. 
I think that he has the advantage of being a big guy and he's coming off the Wyatt family angle and he's got some momentum, but where will he be six months from now? That remains to be seen. I have my serious doubts that he will have long-term success in WWE. For one thing, I'm not a fan of the music. I actually think the music is terrible. I also don't like the nickname Big Red. You already have Kane as the Big Red Machine. Um, not very creative by WWE. And based on what they've done so far, I mean, is this the best that they have for Eric Rowan? If so, I could very well see WWE giving up on him in six months. You know, he could end up being the flavor of the month with the WWE creative team. And then in six months, they move on to the next guy. Uh, so right now, don't know how far Eric Rowan is going to go. They're giving him a big push. He's got a high-profile match at TLC, but uh, where he goes in the next several months, uh, that is a big question mark, definitely. All right, this one comes from Will Hardy 117 What would be your favorite TLC match? Mine would be the 2002 TLC four-way tag team match for the World Tag Team Championship. I think that my all-time favorite TLC match was the one from SummerSlam. I really felt that that was as close to a perfect match that you could ask for. They had spectacular spots in that match. There were very few botched moments in that match. It was uh, laid out very well. The commentary was excellent. The crowd was red hot. Um, it was just all you could ask for and then some. So that was my all-time favorite. I also liked the WrestleMania 17 match. Uh, that was nearly as flawless, in my opinion. And I also enjoyed the TLC match that was on SmackDown in uh, the middle of 2001. And a lot of people forget about that match because it wasn't at a big event. But that one was tremendous as well. Um, there there have just been so many good TLC matches. I mean, it, it's hard to screw those up. Um, especially when you have the talented guys in there that go all out to make it a memorable match. I mean, there, there have been a lot of really excellent TLC matches over the years. All right, next one here comes from Deadpool for Hire. Hey, Aaron, with the recent controversies of how WWE handles its performers, could you see a major union faction being formed to combat these poor conditions? I'd be interested in seeing 10 wrestlers join forces and completely dominate the place. Answer in video. I think the odds are against something like that happening. Jesse Ventura has talked about the idea of a union being formed in the wrestling business, but he had brought up the idea to Hulk Hogan and Hulk Hogan wouldn't go for it. It's really going to take a top level star to get behind that idea for it to even have a chance in my opinion, because if anybody else at a lower level. I mean, today you have John Cena, but anybody else below John Cena, you know, those guys are going to be afraid of speaking out because if they do, they can risk losing their push and they can even risk losing their jobs. Those guys can be replaced. And the reality is if you're unhappy with your spot and your working conditions, there are dozens, if not hundreds of guys that would do anything to have your spot. So because of that, I, I, I think it's very unlikely that we will ever see any kind of union in wrestling. Um, you know, sadly, I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. All right, next question here. Do you think the duo of Stardust and Goldust, I was almost going to say Star and Goldust, uh, but it's actually Gold and Stardust. I just like Stardust and Goldust. Um, so the question here is, do you think the duo of Stardust and Goldust will split soon? Will Cody Rhodes reprise his push? I'm very interested to see what happens with Cody Rhodes after this team is done. First off, I think it's too soon to split up the team. I think you, you still have some mileage with those guys as a tag team. But once it's over, I mean, I don't think we'll see Goldust around. But as far as Cody Rhodes and where he goes after this... I'm not sure. I mean, it's really hard to say if he will ever have a significant role as a singles competitor again. Can he go back to being Cody Rhodes and being a single star? Um, I mean, I'm sure he'll do all right in the mid card, but I don't know if he's ever going to get the kind of push he got three or four years ago when he was doing the dashing Cody Rhodes gimmick. Um, so yeah, I, I really 
don't know what's going to happen with Cody Rhodes once the team splits up. Um, you know, I don't know how far he'll go. It, it, it's really hard to say. But um, yeah, right now I would definitely keep them as a tag team for as long as possible. Got one last question here from Two Tay. Hey Aaron, what's with the WWE's lack of pyro nowadays? Are they in debt? We hardly see any. Not even the Kane pyro. Please answer in video. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. It is a budget issue. WWE trying to cut back on expenses. And I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing. I mean, WWE is taking advantage of the technology that they have right now with the HD screens. And, you know, they put more of an emphasis on the the intros on the big screen and, and the videos and the, the graphics and all that stuff. And that's less expensive than doing the pyro. I think that you should save the pyro for the big shows. I think it makes the big shows more special when you save the pyro for WrestleMania and even some of the other events like the Royal Rumble and SummerSlam. Uh, when you do it every single week, it's not special anymore. You know, when you see the 4th of July fireworks, it's only once a year. If you see fireworks every single week, it's not special. So, uh, you know, I, I do think the pyro, the lack of pyro does hurt a little bit because it takes away from the uh, rock concert atmosphere of a WWE live event. Um, but I, I think it's best to be used in moderation and not on a weekly basis. And also for the obvious financial reasons, you know, it's not really necessary to have it every single week. So if it was my call, I would just do it at the pay-per-view events. That, that's at least what I would do. So that'll wrap it up for No dq &A video. Subscribe if you haven't already. YouTube.com slash No DQ CAW. Click the subscribe button. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com. Vote in the 2014 no DQ year-end awards, and I will see you guys next time for more.